Do you remember how much fun you had in an amusement park when you were a kid? Well, when you're a parent, you live it all over again through the eyes of your child. That's my little girl, Nancy. It's her fun and folly. A treat Alice and I had promised her before sending her on a visit to Grandma's. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce Susie. Nancy would never forgive me. She's made Susie an important part of our family. You know how it is. When a little girl has no brothers or sisters, her doll can become pretty important. And sometimes, so help me, I almost think the girl, I mean the doll, has a personality of her own. Sometimes the upkeep on Susie stretches our family budget. Nancy wants her to have dresses just like she has and make sure Susie shares all the family treats. Well, it is amusing. And of course, uh, we don't spoil her like this all the time. Nancy was only worried about one thing. Would she remember every single bit of excitement so she could tell it all to Grandma? Alice said roller coasters are all right. But she prefers riding in the family car. We both enjoy taking long drives together, and this one had a special purpose. We were on our way to pick up Nancy. She had been with Alice's mother for a week. It seemed a lot longer than that. The house had been so quiet. But we did have Susie to keep us company. With everything that Nancy had to take on the plane, there just hadn't been room for a playmate the size of Susie. Then, less than a half an hour out of town... Here, what's up? Although we were both wearing seat belts, Alice was badly shaken up. I blame myself for maybe driving a little too fast. You always feel guilty at a time like this, even when it's the other fellow's fault. I'd have to get Alice over to Dr. McAllister right away. Then we discovered something that gave us both a genuine shock. What if this had been Nancy? I examined both Mr. and Mrs. Norwood and was happy to tell them that apart from a few abrasions and shattered nerves, they had suffered no serious injury. If they hadn't been wearing their seat belts, however, the verdict would have been different, disastrously different. I thought I was through with my patients when my eyes fell on another casualty. Mr. Norwood was a bit embarrassed until I told him about my work with dolls that had survived car collisions. As a medical consultant for the Institute of Transportation and Traffic Engineering, I examined the dolls that represented children and the dummies that represented adults in the scientific collision staged by the University of California at Los Angeles. Strategically placed cameras covered everything that happened during impact. We were especially interested in what happened to children with and without belts because this subject had not been explored. But even though they were only dolls, and even though these were scientific experiments, we couldn't avoid a feeling of tension and a sense of impending tragedy. For several months, the collision experiments continued at different speeds, at different points of impact, sometimes with the passengers belted, sometimes unbelted.
Speeds such as these of 30 and 40 miles an hour may be moderate by today's driving standards, but not to the motorist slammed about against glass and metal. Children should never be allowed to stand on the seat of a car. Sitting tends to restrict body movement generated by the forces of impact to the rear seat. In many cases where the children were not restrained, our diagnosis of probable injuries showed that they would have been killed. Babies held on laps were thrown completely out of the car. Even in the most severe collisions, university findings showed that the three-year-olds, seated on cushions and restrained by adult belts, came through uninjured. As a result of these experiments, it was found that for one-year-olds, the anchored harness, or harness secured by passing a seatbelt strap through the loops, was the most effective means of restraining the little ones. We found that infants were safest in bassinets, with the long axis of the bassinet aligned with the longitudinal axis of the car and strapped in this position. We also found that infants or children must never be held on the lap and restrained with the adult's belt, as collision forces tend to crush the child. Perhaps you think a collision can never happen to you, but the children will be safer if you admit that it could and prepare accordingly. I wish that everybody could see these scenes because I don't believe that anyone who did would ever let the children go riding unrestrained again. already made up my mind to have the back seat belts installed while the car was in the shop. And we never go anywhere now that we aren't all safely belted. Oh yes, you're probably wondering about Susie. Dr. McAllister knew where to send us, and now she's as good as new. She may be only a doll, but she's never left out. And that includes a safety belt for Susie. Many people who would do anything to protect their children do nothing to save them from injury, pain, or death in the motor accidents that can happen at any time. This is a frank appeal to all mothers and fathers. Without restraints, such as safety belts, the rear seat of an automobile in itself is not adequate protection. University research shows that children who will otherwise be killed can live to prove that safety is no accident. <laughs>